Hello, hello. So, I am here. What is up, my man? So, we got Bracken in the house. How you guys doing? Uh, let me know if audio is coming through okay for you guys. Are you guys getting the audio? We got Ruru2. We got Kevin. Um, audio is good. All right. So I hope everybody's doing well. Um, we got Deacon. How's everything? And I'm ready, Deacon said. Oh, I'm pressing in as always, Deacon. Thank you so much for asking. Uh, Kevin's fishing reptile. What's going on, Kevin? Perfect timing. I just sat down to finish today's video. We got Big Shrimpin. Hello, hello. So I figured out to hop on here, try to catch you guys um, here in the afternoon. Well, it's 12.30 Eastern time, so uh, we got Persiclas in the house lurking. Oh, I know how that is. I know how it is lurking. We got David Betancourt's in the house. What's up, David? Uh, at work, sneak watching. <laughs> so uh, I've had some folks asking what's been going on, so I figured I better, better hop on here chit chat with you guys for a few minutes of course i have my coffee i cannot get my day off right without a cup of coffee or three or five i used to drink 24 cups of coffee a day however i did cut back so a lot of few more folks roll on in here as you can see behind me this is uh predominantly where most of the action goes down here uh, within the fish rooms. Um, Bracken's about ready to go make some coffee. You better. Um, so anyway, I don't know exactly how many tanks are in here right now. Eventually, as I mentioned in previous live streams and so forth, we're going to end up bringing all of the setups into this, which is our storage area, which will be an unfinished area once we turn around and put our home on the market. So uh, eventually... Um, everything will come in here once we're ready to go ahead and um, make any improvements and renovations and so forth in the other part of the family room. However, right now, that's not going to be happening um, anytime soon. Hopefully by spring or something like that of next year, we can go ahead and get our home on the market and uh, be ready. But uh, again, slow but sure, uh, you can see a few things maybe uh, might be different from previous live streams and so forth. On the other side of this camera, which you can't see, I do have a whole nother rack system there with 20 longs and some uh, Marineland hang-on breeder, um, breeder boxes on those tanks as well. But uh, yeah, so I want to say in total, we have between 60 and 65 active aquariums um, at this point in time, I don't know exactly though without going through and actually counting every one of them, but uh, I kind of stopped counting after like 20. Uh, so I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate, but uh, not a ton has changed um, and so forth. Uh, you know, from that standpoint, um, we did actually have a leak, probably about 100 gallons of water. So end up, uh, unfortunately, uh, I forgot to plug back in the sump um and uh which is my control switch and that was actually a couple weeks ago so got that all cleaned up and everything um didn't really anticipate uh have to do that but uh oh well so um end up uh stepping on some pretty <laughs> pretty soaked up uh carpet uh one morning but you just have to laugh um and move forward so uh went and we just had to rent a uh one of those um those carpet cleaners and seem to do the job. So, but other than that, not a whole lot of action. Uh, the video that just came out today here on the Sergeant Tank YouTube channel. Uh, if you guys haven't checked that out, definitely give it a give it a look. See, um, picked up uh, some more livestock at our local aquarium club. Um, and I'm not being biased when I say this, but it's by far one of the most organized clubs and it's been around for a lot of years. Um, not only with a wealth of knowledge and so forth, um, but 
just with that being said, yeah, it is um, definitely is a, uh, a great, great club to obtain not only uh, livestock from different species of fish and, um, and inverts, but also a really nice source to obtain a lot of nice plants as well. So uh, if you guys haven't checked out that video, it make a little bit more sense. Uh, it's about an eight minute video, something like that. Um, and of course, ongoing breeding projects, a lot of inlers we're doing right now, of course, a lot of shrimp, um, doing, uh, different live bear species with different fancy guppies actually in this tank, uh, right over here. Um, I have several hundred, um, fancy guppies in that grow out stock tank. That's a hundred gallon, uh, stock tank. And then I also have another hundred gallon stock tank on the other side of that, um, and then uh, this really isn't, this is more of a grow out area. So a lot of the, um, do a lot of breeding and stuff in this room too, but uh, a lot of the long-term setups and very season setups are in the other fish room, uh, which I've shown a, a lot of times in other videos and so forth. But yeah, those are um, predominantly mostly shrimp tanks. Um, so I'm slowly kind of weaning everything trying to get everything in the here and really just predominantly keep those right now as, as strictly shrimp, uh, shrimp breeding setups and a lot of the, uh, a lot of the, uh, crawls and so forth will end up in various tanks. Cause my, my ultimate goal, uh, as we continue to reside in this current home, we've been here for about 12 years now we've owned this home, but, uh, um, definitely we've outgrown it as a family and so forth. And, and, uh, uh, yeah, there's just can't keep up with, um, uh, the space, you know, having one bathroom that we have to share as a family of six and get a little overwhelming, let alone all the different pets and so forth. We're definitely a very pet oriented family. Uh, everything is based around animals to us. So uh, we definitely, uh, we always tease as a family, we have to charge like an admission um, as people come over because we have um, so many different uh, variations of different pets, not only aquatic life or reptiles, but uh, other pets and so forth but um yeah so a lot of cool things definitely happening um i do have uh lots of video that i still need to go through i'm still working on a um definitely i've tested it out so hopefully you guys can definitely see an improvement here in the next week or two um even the last couple of videos have come out i believe i've actually rendered and edited on this new pc so uh definitely a blessing there uh obtained a a uh, built PC from my brother-in-law uh, put together and basically charged me nearly next to nothing um, for it. So uh, definitely is a, uh, it's a everything that you would want and more. So uh, a couple of more things that we're adding to it uh, and the additional SSD drive to it. And I uh, got to do a couple of things this week with it. Then hopefully, um, so I'm not currently live streaming on that specific PC, which I haven't yet. So hopefully we can see a, uh, a big improvement um, with live streaming and so forth as well. But we got Nick Richards in the house. Um, Axel, hello. Just ordered my first uh, Marina Breeder box. I got the large and it should get here today. Um, also got a call from Josh, the guy in the background of Dustin's fish tanks to confirm my order of large, um, some crip species. That's pretty cool. Um, do you encourage people to join fish clubs? Deacon is wondering. Absolutely. Um, not only is it going to perk your interest as a hobbyist, but you're really going to develop a better overall understanding and knowledge when it comes to different variations of fish keeping because there is so many variables involved in this hobby. And one of the nice things that I've noticed as being more involved and getting more involved in my local club um, and, uh, and so forth is to not only meet other hobbyists, but it really is a drama free. And I'm not gonna say that with every club out there, but that for me is something that I really uh, desire and I need personally in my life is um, when you have enough drama and stuff going on, uh, it's not about, uh, you know, an arms race or arm wrestling to who, you know, who is a better fish keeper and so forth. Um, so it really is about humbling yourself and bring yourself to that place of humility to be open to um, other feedback and so forth and be able to provide feedback and get involved um, with other hobbyists uh, from that uh, standpoint. But yeah, definitely to say it um, in a short response. Um, definitely an advocate, uh, 
people getting involved in, in their uh, local clubs for sure. Not only can you obtain um, a lot of really nice, uh, sometimes rare, sometimes hard to come by, things that you're not going to see in your local fish store and so forth, you just really can find some nice species of fish. Uh, inverts, plants, and really, really good deals on a lot of stuff too. And it definitely makes it all that much better when you really have a well-organized, um, you know, club. So we got Anna Smith. What plants would you get for a low light 55 gallon? Because of the depth of a 55 gallon, I don't personally do anything in a 55, but if I have to recall back to when I used to have a really nice Aquascape 90 gallon, which is a, even taller than a 55, uh, with that being said, I just did really any low light plants with a good furt. So you can see, well, you're not going to be able to really see behind me. I am an old school compact fluorescent kind of guy. So uh, the bulbs that I use is a really nice white spectrum. Um, and so forth. I want to say they're the 6500 Kelvin daytime rated um, 800 lumen and they seem to provide the appropriate depth that I need along with a good furt. So I try to keep everything as simple as possible and really any low light. So as I look around my fish room and a lot of my 10s and 20s and the 40 breeders um, as I'm looking uh, where you guys can't see, I have uh, some Amazon sores, some Java fern, um, it, wisteria, uh, water sprite, um, of course your mosses, your different mosses, your sawasertang. Uh, what else do I have? Uh, the wigia, uh, different different uh, variations of that. Um, I got some bacopa. Oh gosh. And I have a few other species, which I'll be doing an update video on that I acquired from Kyle's Wild World. So definitely uh, was a blessing there. Hooked me up with really a lot of nice stuff, which is currently in quarantine right now. Um, it's not to do anything necessarily with the source. It just is something that I feel every hobbyist should practice, even when you obtain um, livestock from us or plants or whatever the case might be. I always advocate that you do a good regimen of quarantine. So um, you never know what stress during transit and so forth. A lot of things may be overlooked even. That's why there's so many, so many variables in this hobby. Um, it's best to um, just take that precautionary method and definitely do your due diligence and ensure the quarantine. So all of those plants right now are in quarantine, but I will do a species profile. Um, I have a whole list that I'll go through and actually do an update video on once I get them separated into their tanks. So I usually will do probably like a um, two-week quarantine process on them to ensure um, that uh, there is no um, uh, evidence of any type of uh, parasites or any bacterial issues or anything. And you may be asking yourself, well, how do you go about doing that if you don't have livestock? Well, I do actually have livestock in those tanks. So I use a little bit hardier species. I just kind of call them my decoy species. So as long as, and as often as I'm in this fish room, I'm not concerned at all uh, because of my experience and so forth, I will react to it in appropriate time. Um, sometimes there's really no right or wrong when it comes to that but that's just an old school method that i've applied for a lot of years that has worked out successful so um i use hardier species you can use white clouds and so forth and put something like that and typically if there is anything that's being housed within those plants uh and so forth then it'll usually show up and it'll be a, a telltale sign i guess you would say uh then you can go ahead and react to it but um i'm not a big uh advocate on pre um uh, pre-medicating just to medicate unless I know that there was potential issue. So then I'll go ahead and then uh, use a course of um, just precautionary medications, which the, the go-to ones I use right now that I find to be plant, invert, um, scaleless fish safe, snail safe, uh, so on and so forth, is your Prozzi Pro and then your um, ICX. What's the easiest shell dwelling cichlid to start off with? I just started getting into those. Um, I have the Irvin Eye, which is um, actually from Lawrence Kent, but there is a lot of different shell dwelling species um, in from 
my understanding of a lot of people that do those. Uh, they pretty much um, breed like rabbits, and it really is, um, they're quite a hardy species, I find, too, so, uh, which definitely makes it nice. But with the appropriate environment and the right footprint and so forth, I have these guys currently in a 20 long, so I'll definitely be looking at um, something that has more of a, a square footprint area rather than height. Um, I'm not really a big uh, proponent on tall aquariums anyways unless you're keeping like discus or angelfish uh, something like that that needs more um, vertical rather than more horizontal so i try to keep especially with plants and so forth to grow out sufficiently is to keep most of my tanks you know um not as not as tall uh just really easy plants like water sprite and water wisteria both water column feeders uh the encrypted corn are good for low light root feeders yep we have steven in the house how do you manage algae and tanks looking for something uh autosynclus or snails better see me steven i prefer that's why i don't do a lot of in-depth walk around from tank to tank because every piece of algae that i remove in order to capture video is taken away from the benefits that i want to provide to a lot of my fry and the natural ecosystem that happens so that's why if you go into a lot of old school old timers i would definitely date myself pre-95 aquarium fish keeping so i don't really get off into a lot of the new technology and so forth um, i definitely don't advise people using chemicals um, to remove it but if you want to do it naturally uh, hence our logo, obviously, is I definitely recommend uh, good ancestors pleco. You can use autosynclus. Uh, you can use Sowellia um, species spotted do a decent job. I've even seen those guys go after some of the blue, um, blue green type of um, algae and so forth. But uh, they can definitely, um, uh, since they are more. Um, uh, definitely more algae eaters. Uh, they can really get into a lot of the tough spots and so forth, and they do really well with plants, I find. They don't devour those, um, as you would see with some of your placos or even your autosynclus and stuff like that, depending on what type of plants you might have. Uh, you know, they could potentially devour some of those, especially some of your larger um, placos. Um, and even some of the snails, but mystery snails I find uh, don't do a lot of damage uh, in my experience because I keep mystery snails and predominantly most of my, because I breed so many of them, I keep them in a lot of my different uh, various planted setups and I find that they um, do a least amount of damage to uh, the majority of my plants as I've seen with some other snails. So uh, if you're going to ask me one specific species, I would recommend um, as long as you provide the appropriate environment in one of the misconceptions with the Sowellia species spotter, particularly a hill stream loach or borculo sucker, is that they naturally, yes, they do come from more of a fast stream, fast moving. As long as you provide the appropriate oxygenation in the tank, um, they do very, very well. So I keep those guys in various setups um, and I, you know, yet they have any issues with them. Uh, just use good common sense and good judgment. But um, uh, and they can really... Um, handle uh, a lot of different community setups. Uh, I'll be setting up a 60 liter tank soon. I was thinking about, cheers man, no problem. Nick, we got Kyle's Wild World in the house. What's up Kyle? Um, how many tanks do I have? I want to say Kyle in here, I'm not even sure. I want to say I'm running active 60-65 total. Uh, but we would have to go through and count in this room. I'm not even quite sure. Um, Axel said, tiger barbs and platys in the 55. Is it all possible? If so, how many tiger barbs to keep uh, everything nice and calm? Um, tiger barbs are going to be generally a little bit more aggressive. Um, and it's been years since I've had tiger barbs. But my experience, they will be a little bit more semi-aggressive to aggressive. Um, you know... I'm never going to be one to say don't do it because I've done a lot of unorthodox things that most would look at and probably cringe to. How dare you? Like, for instance, um, my Blackmore and Orandas up there, when we obtain those, I, I have my Clark Eye 
uh, crayfish in there, and they did completely fine. So the goldfish and the go after the Clark eyes are no longer in there. I moved them since we added the, the two additions to it, which was in that video that came out today. However, that's just kind of an example of something you wouldn't typically advise of. So it's one of those things, do as I say, not necessarily as I do. However, I think that um, with the appropriate environment, and that's why I always say um, I'll always preach on that, and I swear by that, um, and that's probably one of the greatest advices I can offer to anybody new that's trying out new things. Um, if you've never tried anything out is get them when they're juvenile size rather than being, be a little bit more patient. I think a lot of less stress and environment issues and so forth happen when you buy fish, uh, even shrimp and so forth inverts at a juvenile size, allow them to adapt to that environment. Don't be constantly moving them from environment to environment and then get them all together and then let them grow up to each other, um, grow up with one another. And I think that your results might be a little bit better. Um, now, if you already have obtained or you're trying to maybe take one from one setup and one from another and then uh, slowly join them together, I would do it in a slow process. Maybe offer some type of divider, see what their body language is telling you. Um, because that's something I do constantly is read the body language of my fish. Um, you're usually going to know uh, as you start to slowly introduce how the situation is going to turn out. And that doesn't mean that you're not going to wake up one morning and find that something devastating happens. So you're always taking that potential risk. Uh, but as long as the, the water parameters and everything um, can, can go hand in hand there, then I think the coexistence is possible, and I think it's definitely feasible with the appropriate introduction. So I think it's just a slow and steady process. Don't rush into it. Um, provide a plenty of structure, um, plenty of plants. Um, give them that safe haven that they would desire. And, um, yeah, so I just did a live count. I have 61, but it doesn't seem like enough. It never is enough. Uh, hey, Sarge, been a while. Hope you're doing well. Relax, y'all. I am pressing in. Um, not the greatest, but, you know, we got to keep on keeping on. But thank you so much for asking. Uh, we got Corey from KP Aquariums. What's up, Corey? Jeremy, what's up? How's everybody doing today? So, let's see. I got to take a drink here. Axel, you are more than welcome. So, um... Let's see. We do have a swap meet coming up this Saturday, um, which we're actually trying. They are out as a club. Usually they only did one once in the winter, usually around January. Uh, now they're going to be doing one twice a year. Well, this is going to be kind of a test, and it sounds like there's going to be a lot of vendors and so forth uh, that are going to be coming and actually showing up, which, of course, will be one of them here at Sergeant Tank. So I'm excited about that. It's always a great opportunity to provide um uh, some of your livestock that we've all take great passion in into raising and offer it to other hobbyists in the area at a reasonable rate. So we'll have a bunch of livestock and dry goods there. So if you guys are interested, I don't like to sit here and appreciate you guys on um, go to our website. But the biggest support that you can do is purchase from us. We do ship internationally, however, um, only continental U.S. for any dry goods and chemicals and plants. Um, international, or I'm sorry, any livestock, international is any dry goods, excluding um, any chemicals. Uh, the only thing with that is um, it's all laid out, a lot of confusion there, but if you just go to the shipping uh, policies, it's not going to let you do it through the site, but everything is explained in great detail. So anybody internationally is looking at purchasing or interested in purchasing and wants to know a shipping quote, everything uh, is explained there in our shipping policies on our website. And our um, website is linked below in the description as well as the email. So you can always get in contact with me. And I try to get back with you within 24 hours. Um, most of the time I, I get back pretty quickly unless we're in the middle of something as a family. So I just try to give me like 24-hour leeway. And I do my due diligence to make sure I get back with you. What is going on, Priscilla? Um uh, caught you. I am in Ontario, Canada. I'm in the process of setting up a fish room in rat for a home base biz. I have a good uh, stock of um, oxalatos, but I'm wondering what's a good cell breed. 
something good to sell, you're going to have to check your market. One thing I found in my experience that by far is the best is your ancestrous, your common ancestrous, bushy nose or bristle nose plecos. Um, usually your chocolate variant seems to be the ones that are a seller in most markets, at least throughout the U.S. So if I had to give up every single thing and only breed one thing, um, that would be the one thing I would recommend. We got Dank in the house. Yeah, like Bracken also mentioned, guppies. Um, the only thing with guppies is they're a very, very low return on investment. Um, the reason I say that depends on what type of guppy strain you have. I'm sure I have some here in the stock tank that are probably worth uh, a little bit, few dollars more than others. However, um, for the most part, I know most ancestrous and... Uh, I want to say if that video came out, I don't recall. However, I've done a full in-depth video. Uh, I want to say it'll be re-released. It was a live stream. And I want to say I did a video on it too. I just don't remember. I've done so many videos. I think we're at almost 150 videos on this channel. Um, and that was just this year. So I can't recall exactly, but very, very in-depth, something um, that I have proven time and time again that's uh, very successful and breeding in sisters placos and getting those guys to be at a mature uh, sexual maturity usually around eight months of age. So I'm not going to go in depth on this live stream um, because I've already talked about it several times. So you could definitely check it out. I know I have it in videos in my repertoire. So if you go back in the video list and I want to say in about a week, I'll be re-releasing a live stream I did it maybe a week and a half ago that I edited that goes over all about ancestors placos. Uh, setting up those stands for a new frog tank and 20 long aquarium tanks said. Um, chocolate variant, yeah, chocolates, you gotta just check in your market and see what, that's the main thing. Um, and take it slow, don't rush into it. Uh, no, most mix are not good, but if you get a good strain, you can make some profit. I want to get some platinums or snow whites, I think, for the guppies. How are those plants doing for you, Kyle? Is wondering. They're doing amazing, Kyle. Still in quarantine. They are doing amazing. Uh, did you see the 240 in my vid yesterday? Um, Corey, I watched your vid. Yes, I did. That was the one that you had tested out. That you were testing out, yes. Um, let's see. Uh, he means just the normal variety that is brown instead of albino or the green dragons. Yeah, a lot of people mistaken the, uh, if you want to be technical, um, the technicality when it comes to Ancestrus is without going into nerding out and everything, I see a lot of them really misrepresented. I'm not toot my own horn, but by far, I feel we have the best variations of Ancestrus. I've been breeding them for over 10 years, probably over 12 years now. Um, obviously, that's why I plastered a Placo on our shirts and did all the investment. Uh, something near and dear to my heart that I put a lot of time in um, and uh, to really get the best genetic lines and so forth. But, um, yeah, I mean, a lot of ours, if you look at purely color, is actually a green um, some of them you can get true chocolate, more of a brownish color. And then of course, uh, true, true albino. I've even had them almost white, um, or an off white, but, uh, most of them as albinos now on the market are, you know, I don't really look at it as a true albino cause true albino is usually white. Um, but, uh, yeah, they're now more of a yellowish, yellowish color. So I have some really, really nice, um, high end. Uh, males that are really nice yellow. Um, but those guys are quite a few years old. So uh, let's see here. I want to stay away from the common type placos due to their size. Yeah, I would never, never advise going with um, any common placo. 
Um, you can do, uh, and sisters plecos are only going to get five, six inches, um, the males. So, and they're not uh, as much waste producers as the other ones I find. Let's see here. My bristle nose just died. Can't figure out why. Only could chalk it to age. He was adult. Um, they will get stunted if you don't provide the appropriate environment. That's the one thing that I always oftentimes hear that I would push back. Yes, they are an easy species. I would honestly say most anything's easy as long as you provide the right environment, right? So what's easy to one may not be necessarily easy to another. So for instance, discus to me. People think that they're difficult. I think that they're easy. They're actually easier than some of my other South and Central American cichlids I have. But again, I think it just all chalks up to, you know, your experience, what your environment is, um, the consistency in your regimen as far as overall maintenance. Um, uh, but it's something I can really just preach on for days and days at a time as less as best. So, for instance, with Ancestors Placos, um, I think oftentimes I see people overfeeding. Um, as, again, I only need to feed these guys once a week. And uh, with good regimen of consistent water changes, as I've talked about before, and hardly ever do I have any issues. Usually it's a genetic deficiency or something like that. But if you overfeed, a lot of times they can get bloated. And usually what I find with, you know, catfish or quote unquote more scaleless species of fish is sometimes it's a little bit harder to reverse uh, some of those issues. Um, once they develop ick or other um, intestinal issues and so forth, it can be hard to treat. Uh, so that's why I just do your due diligence, understand what you're getting into. Uh, yes, they can be a harder species depending on the source that you get them from. That's why with ours, we definitely condition them the best that we can to uh, be able to provide to those within the continental U.S. that's going to have similar water parameters as us. Um, so again, it's, it's raising them through stages from fry all the way up until, you know, sub-adult age or even juvenile size once we're, you know, shipping them all throughout the continent of the U.S. to provide to other hobbyists. Um, that's my main goal uh, with anything I breed is to really condition them to make it easier and less stressful, first and for foremost, on the livestock and the well-being of the fish or shrimp or whatever you're getting, but also for, uh, for the individual that's obtaining them. Uh, I have four or five bristles that are just coming to breeding age. I want to stay away from the. Okay, I already read that. Um, let's see here. Oops. Uh, I have some reading to do. I appreciate it. Oh, you're more than welcome. Yeah, Mike in the house. I'm on the hunt for a male epistogramma uh, fire red three to... F oh, my goodness. Uh, live in southeast Michigan. Got any to sell or perhaps a lead? Uh, Mike, let me take your information down, and I do have a couple of ideas in mind. However, due to confidentiality and so forth, I'm not going to publicly put that here because I don't know if those individuals want their names out here on YouTube. So what I'm going to do, um, Mike, if you can send me an email with your contact information, uh, there's an email link directly in the uh, d description below, which is sergeant.tank at yahoo.com. And then um, provide me, just copy and paste this information if you can do me a favor. And um, go ahead and, and send me an email. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll reach out to a couple of sources um, with those specific species. And I'll see um, if there's anything I can do to help you out there. 
Uh, Dank is 182. It is on the high end. I would not do it for a prolonged period of time. I find that they do best with their metabolism and so forth. Uh, they keep those guys anywhere between uh, 72 and 77, 78 degrees. But once you start peaking past 78, 80 degrees, um, you're going to start stressing them out. Uh, I did the mistake of getting a common when I got my first tank and didn't know. Now he's a tank bust around 15 inches. I'm back. Did I miss anything? Good. Just talking about um, different uh, ancestors and so forth, um, Kevin. So nothing, uh, nothing too much here. So maybe he was uh, up tense. Tapeworms deli. Yeah, I mean it's possible. Um, so yeah, it's a cut 22 dank. I mean, it, it could be on the flip side of that. If you're not feeding the appropriate, very diet with those guys, um, the diet I swear by for those guys and you'll have placos that'll last for five plus years, almost always. Um, but again, you could match water per water, uh, which isn't even a possibility uh, due to the fact that there's different variables in our municipal water source. Um, the only way to do it is we would have to start out with reverse osmosis deionization de water and then remineralize that water and then start out with identical seeded sponge filters within the same source, if you know what I'm saying. I mean, this topic can get very, very complex, but, um, you know, that's why there's so many variables in this hobby and we only try to match as best as we can um, and try to provide the overall right environment. But yeah, you can't beat yourself up over it. Um, you just try to try to do what you can better next time. Um, but I use a uh, just a green bean French style or sometimes I'll rinse them. Depends on the mood I'm in. Uh, of course, I just drain it out. I don't dump the whole can directly in there because I don't want the, all the sodium content and so forth from the water from the can that go into the tank directly. So um, now I'll just go ahead and divvy it out, I'll portion it appropriately uh, to what I feel is necessary for that particular tank. And then I'll go ahead and provide uh, three different variations of a mix thing that I put together. Um, basically, um, one part. So I guess you would say if you fill up a container, so I use like ye size container and I fill it up and I, I, I do that on a need to basis. So usually it'll last me like a whole year, but I'm looking at it right now on my South and Central American cichlid display tank is I use tetracolor granules, Hakari gold, um, the sinking Excel, and I also use the Omega one super color and I mix that one third of each and just divvy it up. Then I shake it up really good and I find that's what I feed to a lot of my different stuff. And I'll do that usually uh, once a week on top of once a week with the green beans. And then keep in mind, I'm also doing a uh, large consistent water volume, um, large water volume changes on each one of my um, ancestor setups too. And we're live with Jeremy, a.k.a. the Sergeant of All Tanks. I'm late, KG. What's up, Kevin? Did you ever get those uh, Rapashi? Because it has yet to be sent back to me there, Kevin. All right. looks like Mike uh, is posting his email here. All right, Mike, um, you're going to have to resend me that, though, because I don't have um, what I need here by the, to be writing this down. But um, what I can do is uh, once this is over, I'll shoot you an email. So just reiterate again what you did up here in the chat as far as what species you're looking for. Aqua Apprentice, hello. Thank you. Emailing you now, Mike said. Okay, no problem. Um, okay, I got to go back to adulting. Have a nice day. Jenna, hello. The main reason I asked is because I wanted to know if I should put another one in the 82 degree. Or I'm asking for trouble. Um, I don't honestly think any fish should be that high for any prolonged period of time. Um, 
Again, I try to keep most of my um, tropical setups. Um, Brad can have a great day. Thanks so much for stopping by. Um, the problem is you're depleting oxygen, even with the appropriate aeration and so forth. Again, a lot of variables that we could really dig into depth. But um, the only things I really ever keep that high is really my African cichlid tank. Um, but there's so much aeration in that tank, I could even drop it down. So some of my African cichlids I've kept in 78 degrees. Some I've kept in, you know, 83, 84 degrees. Um, and uh, I try to just try to keep everything consistent. And the hard thing about that is the environment here in the climate and just the ambient temperature, um, it's hard to sometimes control, especially in the summertime. So um, without throwing in like an AC unit, you know, and, and trying to control, you know, you just, it is what it is at the end of the day. So a lot of these tanks behind me that you see here are not where I would like to see them. Um, they're actually on the higher end of what I would like to see. So, um, I try to keep most of my setups, even, um, most of my tropical fish setups right around 77, 78 degrees, um, and so forth. But yeah, so that's just me. Um, I've learned the hard way, I guess, from lots of years of uh, being in this hobby when I've kept even some of my South and Central American cichlid tanks at higher temps to try to defeat or combat some diseases and so forth. It just, I found over the longevity, keeping tanks consistently at that sweet spot of right around 78 degrees, 77 with most of my setups, um, seem to do well for me so um i'll be checking reception they were supposed to notify me i'm going to go over there and shake me fist and yell do you know who i am you better kevin better let them know what's up so i'm hoping they didn't get sent back to me um i haven't yeah i haven't received we got our mail today and haven't received anything, so. Uh, Kevin said, don't want to overstep, but if you wanted to add my shirt to your collection, uh, I put my current shirt available for a short time, only chance to order. Laugh out loud. Where is that at? Is that at Teespring, Kevin? Um, right now, finances wise, yeah, there's a lot of shirts. I want to say the last one that we obtained here to add to the collection. Um, yeah, I won't be doing any more, um, right now anyways, but definitely, um, here at some point in the future, um, is something I would be interested in. Um, cause we do like to try to collect and I want to do something cool with that in a few years. Um, maybe like a quilt or something like that, but, uh. Yeah, um, right now everything's on hold. Um, I wanted to obtain a bunch of more swag um, from our local um, printing company, which is only about f seven minutes from our home. But uh, yeah, so it's just very, very costly. Now I'm tripping over my temperature. How quick should I? Um, don't be tripping, Dank. It's one of those things, I'm just telling you, I'm trying to be transparent. Um, you know, you're going to have some people that are going to say that they've kept it for 25 years at 82 degrees. So um, I'm only doing what I do myself. That's that's where transparency comes in. I'm not saying my way is the right way or the wrong way. I just know it has worked for me. My shirt next, Jenna said. <laughs> Yeah, I know there's a lot of individuals now coming out with some cool um, some cool swag. Let's see here. Just scrolling through to make sure I didn't miss anything.
what do you have just in that top row behind you? Um, I got various um, antlers in there. I got some blue star antlers. I have different um, uh, cherry shrimp tanks. I got the uh, variatus platys. Uh, I got some pulselia wing eye antlers. I have uh, rainbow tiger antlers. Uh, I have some German blue rams. What else do I got? Um, we got our fancy goldfish. I got my blue dream shrimp tank and carbon really neocaridina shrimp. So, and then some grow out of the variatus platys, which is in the end. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Jenna said, I know I want everybody's. Links to both color and black are in the description of this video as well as why they are available. All right. Going gold, are you? Laugh out loud. <laughs> I had to represent, uh, that was actually a designated tank to Nisi. Um, so I am not a huge goldfish individual. However, I consider myself equal opportunity. So I'm just a pet lover all around. Um, so, you know, I try to switch it up a little bit. And, yeah. I have micro room culture that I made following your video. They are doing great. Multiplying like crazy. That Jenna, that is great. Um, I'm looking at one, two, three, four, five cultures, which I have to do minimal stuff with. So um, I do have to add a little bit more instant mashed potatoes um, and then eventually. So I always keep five, minimum of five active, and then I have five other containers. So when I'm ready to restart the culture, once it gets to that point, then I can go ahead and just convert it all over and just repeat the process. So. Um, so yeah, go check out if you guys are interested in Kevin's fish tank and reptile, um, go check out their latest video. Um, looks like, but is the big changes video, all oh, big changes video last week. And then you can check out all the details as far as, um, some, some swag. I can't see my koi anymore. It's overgrown. Just waiting on those front toasts, of KG. So when Kevin gets sick and tired of his uh, front toasts, uh, um, then uh, yeah. All right, so we got 20 in here um, right now, which I kind of figured I'm not going to get a ton of traffic because this was not pre-scheduled or anything. But the last few minutes here, I want to just kind of focus on what are video ideas that um, Kevin said, I hope you're patient. Yep, just waiting on you, KG. Uh, so want to hear some video ideas that you guys would be interested in seeing um, here on this channel. So if you guys go back way back to the very beginning, which wasn't that long ago, cause I just started putting out content the last of the end of last year. Uh, however, I did a lot of stuff behind the scenes. You're talking about somebody lurking and so forth. I was definitely, uh, one to lurk for probably two plus years. So, um, but with that being said, uh, just wanted some different ideas because the thing is I want to be able to switch it up. So other people I've mentioned do more fabrication and do-it-yourself stuff. So um, within reason, I don't mind providing that. But uh, if I can get some specifics on what might be of interest, rather, I mean, that could be anything from electrical related to control switches, um, something like a... Um, like a basic control, maybe it's a control box that 
you plug something in as central to, you know, operate all your tanks, lighting or something like that. You know, I'm just trying to think outside the box, um, maybe things that haven't necessarily been done in a video formation um, in any great detail. You know, um, is it uh, species identification on certain fish? Um, you know, I, I guess I'm just trying to kind of throwing things out there. So the best thing you can do, obviously, to provide feedback to us as creators on YouTube is really to just go in the comment section. Let us know um, what you liked or what you didn't like about the video, uh, what maybe you might like to see different in the future, um, that type of thing. Simply Betta is in the house. How are you doing? A uh, video of you trying to hand catch a fish in a local stream. Um, yeah, that's different. Uh, let's see here. Had a great time here today. Hope to catch you guys again next time. Thank you so much, Stephen. With his mouth like a bear. <laughs> Um, probably not going to be doing a lot of that just physically again, within reason. Um, definitely something I've done before, uh, not necessarily with my mouth, uh, dealing with sick fish meds and or type of meds and experience that you personally have in the dealing with sick fish. I know of the general cure and common ones, but I'm sure there is more, uh, the ones I swear by that have worked for me. Uh, is the ICAX and Prozzi Pro. So those two seem to work well. How to breed videos, okay. Uh, Rogue Aquatics, how are you doing? A small room water drain system, okay. I want to see fish make Whoopi Goldberg. Uh, how to breed videos are always good and interesting. Fish tank count, aquaponics. So, yeah, a lot of great ideas there for sure. I'll probably have to go back and rewatch this to remember everything that we just um, talked about here, but I will do my best to remember some of those ideas. Um, and again, you're just going to have to give it time and patience because it's not going to happen overnight. So, a lot of things I'm focusing on right now is doing less of live streaming as you guys have noticed uh, if I want to truly grow um, the channel and so forth then um, that is just one thing that I have to apply so I've done some support and help with other channels now I'm trying to really support and help this own channel to, to grow uh, within the community so um, a lot of that uh, is just understanding the overall YouTube algorithm and how it changes on a day-to-day -day basis and so forth. But uh, uh, yeah, so I plan on doing more collaborations uh, and so forth, but uh, write it down. Well, I need to grab a pen and paper. Full concise tour of all your tanks. Yeah, I could do that. Um, the only issue is these tanks here don't have a lot of LG because these are recently set up. And because of the lighting and the location and so forth, um, some of these tanks just aren't at that point. But, um, yeah, I'll I'll see what I can do. Uh, it's not necessarily going to be a tank by tank due to the fact I'm not going to be clearing off the LG. Uh, just because that is beneficial microorganisms for a lot of my fry and my shrimp. And that is sometimes months of good growth. That's why I don't do a lot of um, tank by tank walkthroughs. Uh, videos on YouTube algorithm and how it changes all the time. Yeah, it's, yeah, there's a lot of different individuals out there that, yeah, I'm trying to do more, more diligence myself in, a lot of stuff is just through trial and error. I mean, that's how a lot of these experts, quote unquote, certified YouTube individuals that would consider themselves experts. I mean, if you look at a lot of these individuals, I mean, their own channels only have a growth of, 
you know, maybe a thousand or 2000 subscribers. Some are, you know, if I went and talked with somebody that are in the millions of subscribers that are more, one of the issues I can identify with this channel and kind of something that just was always in the back of my mind that I mentioned to a couple of other, um, friends here in the fish community. Um, and, uh, just got their feedback is, um, is due to Sergeant Tank. I think a lot of the reason is um, that the growth isn't at the rate that it could be is due to the fact I don't have aquarium in the name. I don't have um, aquatic or fish keeping in the name, and I'm not going to change the name. Um, you know, I will never change the name. It's always, of course, going to be Sergeant Tank, but that is always something there in the back of my mind. Um, if it was like Sergeant Tank fish keeping or Sergeant Tank aquatics or something like that, when we came up with a name, um, as a family and so forth, and then came up with our design concept and our logo was one of the things I wanted to stand out and be different. Um, and that was hence the reason why we came up with, you know, um, Sergeant Tank. So uh, definitely is something more authority. Um, something that definitely can get, get your attention. However, it is not benefiting. Um, so I do have to work a little bit harder in order to take advantage and capitalize on some of those areas with YouTube um, to tag and title and try different things to see um, how we can get the awareness out there because we can try to do as much as we can with the best technology available. Uh, of course, a lot of it at the end of the day comes down to just overall uh, good video content and, uh, you know, good audio and not only visual and good information and so forth. But, yeah. Hey, tank a day every day, the new daily dose. Um, how about videos on start to finish setup? The videos I've seen are generally very short. Add substrate, cycle, and fish. I am planning on doing long-term videos on progress. I did already do one of those. It's how to set up an aquarium, uh, which is a few months back. So it was about a 22-minute video and uh, went over from start to finish. I got tens of hundreds. <laughs> a series of videos that takes... in. A series of videos that takes an in-depth look at spectrum of variation amongst an individual species might be cool. Uh, one week you present the tetra and in numerous types. Next week the beta and its multitude of variations. Okay. You need a tank shaped like a military tank, my friend. Yeah, um, it's definitely something that wouldn't be too difficult to fabric fabricate if I still had a lot of the... Um, I can't draw a single thing for the life of me, but I can usually replicate just about anything. Um, fabrication to me is not difficult at all. It just comes up with the right tools and, and materials and so forth. Um, but, yeah. So, yeah, definitely a lot of great ideas. I really appreciate the feedback. Um, so, yeah, a couple of the are sticking out to me for sure. Um, that I would like to go through. I'm thinking of more an ongoing series of tank setup, ongoing maintenance and problem encounter for sure. It's almost like a, uh, a daily vlogging of your fish room. Do you have a saltwater tank? I do. Yep. Although I'm not a fan, um, just because I've been 20 plus years uh, in freshwater, um, I'll always find a nice aquascaped, nice natural ecosystem from a freshwater setup very much more appealing to me any day over the week than a bunch of coral. Uh, that's just my own personal prerogative. There it is, the tank, tank build series. Well, you understand, Kevin, obviously I can't physically do... A lot of the stuff, that's why I don't do a lot of outdoor videos. I mean, um, a few years ago, if I was doing YouTube, but that would be back when things first started. 
uh, you know, when I was doing a lot more hiking and hunting and a lot more outdoorsy type of stuff, then yeah, I definitely would have done more uh, video on that type of that type of um, footage. But a lot of stuff now, I just need to be able to be within an arm's reach as I'm sitting down, something at a table, so something that's not too extravagantly big for me to hire somebody then show them what to do. Basically, one of those things I found uh, is that I was able to get the information on how to set up, how to clean and care for a tank, but the occasional surprise that come up power just flickered off and then on any suggestions for what to do when power goes out if it's a short period of time one of the things i'm speaking of on personal experience so if we're talking fish room if it's one or two aquariums and it's not a huge huge deal when you're running 50 plus aquariums in the investment then you need to purchase yourself a uh, reasonable generator i think it's a it's a it's a must so you can sit here and try to do the DIY things all day long, floating a bottle of hot water that you warmed up, you know, in the tank and things that have been around for a hundred plus years. I mean, you can try these different things, but that's one area that I don't think you should skimp out on. Uh, even if you have to put a few bucks away a week to save up for that unfortunate event, we got ours through our local Harbor Freight and you can sometimes get them on sale and I can run my entire fish room, our refrigerator and other appliances and so forth off from that and uh, a lot of the stuff I keep here um, I would be more concerned about my freshwater setup than my saltwater uh, just due to the fact I'm really keeping a lot of sensitive fish that cannot handle um, no oxygenation in the tank and it just it, it's a no-brainer when I've already spent thousands upon thousands through the years um, in not only including my time which you can't put a value on the investment and and so forth i have to have a generator so for the three to five hundred bucks depending on how big your fish room is i uh, would always increase it because you have to look at the longevity of it um you know once you add more setups and so forth and you know depending on how many heaters if you have those running if you're running um you know, uh, hang on back filters or canister filters. A lot of our tanks now are just strictly sponge filters. Uh, but you know, if it's one or two tanks and let's say you're running one, one of the main things I notice is don't assume that like your canister filter, if you're running, for instance, might get air in the line. So you're going to have to reprime it. Um, so don't assume once your power kicks off and then it kicks back on, especially for any prolonged period of time, as soon as that canister, uh, or even your hang on back filter, especially the hang on backs, which I'm not a fan of, but we do have some because they came with a couple of 90s that we obtained uh, last year. So uh, I obtained the Aquion, I want to say it's the 75s or something like that. But um, I'm just utilizing those as a secondary filtration on our stock tanks. And uh, actually, on one of the stock tanks, I took the other one off here. However, uh, that one sometimes will not reprime itself. So you just want to. Make sure with that so you don't end up burning out your filters. But, yeah, I mean, oxygen, um, appropriate water. I'll be more concerned about depletion of oxygen than I would about the temperature. Um, that's just me and our climate. But, again, a lot of variables there. And, yeah, suggestion there is battery backups. Yep, we do carry a couple um, on the website. Uh, that are better than your common aquarium one. These are actually for uh, fishermen. Um, it is a battery backup, so a pretty high power one. Um, you could always get an inverter too. That's another great suggestion there. It could be a little bit more cost effective for you. And uh, you can run a lot off from your car battery if you have a nice inverter that can handle the appropriate amperage and wattage and so forth but um, yeah how you doing Tori KG said a 10 gallon shaped like a tank with a pee puffer I have two pee puffers left I will never get pee puffers again 
Um, I jumped on the bandwagon and it is strictly my fault. So I lost about eight of them and about $50 worth of pea puffers because I did not give them the time and attention that they needed. So needless to say, yeah, I used to keep pea puffers a long time back. I'm just not a fan of them. Um, that's just me. So you live and you learn, but by far one of the worst investments that I personally did. I just do not enjoy them whatsoever. So I have two left here, which I might end up. Um, they're actually really nice fat, and they're doing really well. So um, with that being said, I'm probably going to end up bringing these guys to the swap meet and just get rid of them. Um, I'm just trying to open up a lot of my setups. I have found when my power goes out and then comes um, back on, I have to check my hang on backs as some don't reprime. Yep. Um, hello, Fish Family. What's up? We got Joe in the house. How you doing, Joe? Um, it's just 20 gallons, so it should be fine. Thanks. Yeah. I won't worry. You get too stressed out. Um, now, if you have a fish room, then that's when you need to make the investment. I think it's just a must. I think anybody that's keeping anything worth of value, um, for the 500 bucks, I mean, you think about how much money you already spend if you really add it up, not even, not even including your time. Um, I think it's just uh, a common sense thing that needs to be done. And if you ask me, Jeremy, well, are you saying more than 20 tanks and need to invest in a generator? It just depends on the value. What value do you place on your setups? Because you might have 10 setups that might have four times the value of somebody that has 50 setups. Um, it just, yeah, it's just not worth the risk to me. KG said 55 and 75 self prime, self prime. Sometimes they get stuck. Yeah. Mine, um, mine always not, shouldn't say always, but yes, they do sometimes get stuck. So bummer. I love my pea puffer. They are awesome. Yeah. I'm just not, it, it's just, I've had them before, and when I had them in a different setup before, but now with all the setups I have, and this was several years back, um, they were cool. Um, now I'm just, my interests have changed because I do so many different breeding projects now, uh, especially now having a website and tr trying to provide different things to other hobbyists. That is definitely my attention, is more on breeding rather than keeping a display tank. Um, I, of course, I do have my two three display tanks uh not in this fish room however the majority are 90 percent of my setups now are all breeding hey jeremy take care great live stream today axel thank you so much really do appreciate it have you ever used under gravel filters i just got eight tanks with them included i have never tried yes um if they're used appropriately i think that they're fine i'm not saying it's i'm not saying one way or the other um that uh, I think they definitely have the pros and cons if you know how to use them appropriately. So my recommendation would be is do your research and due diligence to understand more about the concept of that filtration. So it's been around for a lot of years, and I think that they can have their benefits, but I think they, they can also have um, lots of cons if, if not done appropriately. What setup would you have if you had large frontosa? I would be utilizing the largest setup I have available, and that would be uh, my 90 gallon. Let's see here. Um. Well, you guys, that brings us up on an hour here today. So I really appreciate you guys very much for stopping by. If at, for whatever reason I missed anybody's question um, during this uh, live stream, feel free to go ahead and send me an email, which will be linked in the description below. So definitely uh, thank you guys so, so much. It is, yes, KG. Um, don't forget to like people, Nick said. So... Yeah, definitely check out our website, which is also in the description below. Um, and, yeah. 
So stay tuned. We'll have some more videos coming out for you guys. As you can see, the last couple of weeks, um, I want to say we put out three videos a week. And don't think there's really much else to say. So continue to let us know um, how we're doing, what else you would like to see in the comments below. And if you did dislike for whatever reason, you have all the right in the world to do it because that's why it is there. So just let us know um, kindly why you dislike the video. Um, so we can try to improve upon uh, during the next uh, video that we put out. So with that being said, much love you guys. And as always, stay encouraged. Keep on keeping on. Happy fishing. And we will talk to you guys on the next one.